Hello everyone and welcome to our session on developing a search strategy. My name is Julie Brown and I'm a community manager um, in Covidence and I'm based in New Zealand. The invited speaker today whoop, in today's session is Marion Scholl. Marion is an information specialist um, for Cochrane Gynaecology and Fertility Group and is the first author of three large Cochrane systematic reviews. Marianne has a Master's um, of Library and Information Studies from Victoria University and a Master's in Public Health from Sydney University. We're very pleased to have her here today to speak to us. Some housekeeping before we begin today's session. Um, this session is going to be run in webinar format. All attendees will be muted, but you can ask questions at any time by using the questions box, which you'll see on the right hand side of your screen. We'll endeavour to respond to questions during and after the session, and any questions that we can't answer, we'll um, contact you separately to be able to give you that information. As you may know, Covidence was created by and for the research community and is designed to streamline the review process through review management, screening and data extraction and quality assessment. The platform allows our review teams to significantly reduce the amount of time that um, can be spent on reviews and that means that um, users are able to produce high quality evidence faster. The Covidence journey begins um, with importing citations and references and the searching for this has to be done outside of Covidence. We want to ensure that you're able to develop strong strategies that optimize your included studies and to try and prevent the need for us to reset your reviews and for searches to be rerun. So on that note I'm going to hand over now to Marianne and we look forward to your presentation. Hi everybody, um, I'm Marianne and um, thanks for coming today to listen to um, my talk on developing a search strategy. So I hope you can all see my screen. Oops. Okay, so in a systematic review, we have certain steps that we follow and um, we generally look at developing our search for studies at step four. So that is after we've defined our question clearly, our eligibility criteria, and we've planned our methods. So we've developed our PICO strongly. So that's the participants we're interested in, the intervention, the comparison, and the study design. So we're going to talk today about how you plan the search how you construct and how you manage or report research. And if you need any extra help, chapter four of the Cochrane Handbook is useful. So um, we would always say for you to get help when you are designing a search strategy because they can be quite a complex things to do. So consult your local health librarian, or if you're writing a Cochrane systematic review, you can um, contact your Cochrane information specialist that's attached to the review group that you're um, working with. And depending on the resources of uh, the librarians or the information specialists, um, they'll give you as much uh, help as they can. Uh, um, it may just be commenting on a strategy that you've designed or in the case of information specialists, it might be running and sending the output to you. It just depends on the resources of the group. So we always advocate for a very rigorous approach to searching. So searching in only one database is nowhere near enough because you won't be finding what you need for your systematic review. You'll be introducing a selection bias and you'll reduce your generalizability. So that just means you won't be finding um, the population from the references that you need for your PICO. And all the way along, um, we're trying to balance the sensitivity of the search with efficiency. So we're always trying to find as many references as we can, of course, um, but then we need to balance this with the practicalities of what authors can search 
So you'll be, um, if you're doing your own, you'll be trying to um, get the important papers uh, in a practical way. So this is what we're not doing. Uh, we don't stand in one location or search one database using one tool, with one fishing rod, finding only one fish or one paper. We're actually trawling for information. So we are traveling multiple locations, multiple databases bringing up as much as we can with the full knowledge that we will bring up a lot of rubbish as well and we'll be throwing a lot back in, but we will be finding the papers that we need. So the sources that you need to think about searching are Central, Medline, Embers, the trial registers for ongoing trials, other journals that might not be indexed in the databases, and unpublished and ongoing studies. So our first port of call really was searching the central because that contains RCTs and quasi-RCTs for a systematic review. Um, and this uh, slide just shows that Medline has a direct import into central, Embase and CINAHL now does with Career Med and the trial registries of clinicaltrials.gov and the WHO portal. The other 40% also includes records from Cochrane Review Groups, and these are records that are in specialised registers and they're maintained and processed from email alerts from multiple databases, hand search and conference abstracts, and all other sources. So you can see we're getting on for nearly 2 million records in Central now. Um, this is just a screenshot of um, uh, Cochrane.org of Cochrane Crowd. And Cochrane Crowd are a voluntary group of people who are interested in trials and systematic reviews. And as I said in the slide before, there's an automatic import into Central of Enbase records. Um, and these are <clears throat> records that have the RCT tag already put on them by the indexes. But there's a whole lot of uh, references, papers that come through that don't have this tag on, that need to be eyeballed by humans. And these people do this on a voluntary basis. They just look at each reference, judge whether it's an RCT or not. If it is, it goes through to central. If it's not, it, it is removed. So um, it's just a <clears throat> query fun thing to do. And if you're interested in participating, this is a link at the bottom. And this is the Cochrane Library. So um, the next few slides I've put together uh, take you through searching the Cochrane Library because I actually find it not that intuitive and a little bit tricky. So um, I just wanted to lay it out quite clearly for you. So we have a basic search box, but we generally like to use the advanced search. You can search for just trials. Mm, and you can use this help function, which is really useful if you get stuck. So this is in the advanced search and the, the home birth I've just typed in there is an example of a text word or a word that is found in the title abstract or keyword of a paper. And so you run this search. And it will bring up over 2000 trials. There's a really good tab at the end of this, um, which is very useful to use because it will bring up Epistemonicus, which is another database now contained in the Cochrane Library that will bring up not only other, more RCTs or the same, but you might find a few more, but most importantly, it will bring up the systematic reviews that you will be needing to um, look at the search strategy, the, the reference list to find any additional trials. And then you need to send this to the search manager. And this is the bit that I always found tricky. So you send it to the search manager and the search manager looks like this. The next thing you need to do in constructing this search is to put in your medical terms or your mesh terms as they're called in the plan or central. And these are terms that indexes have labelled a study according to its topic. So all studies with a similar topic will be indexed with the same term. 
and this is what you click on English terms, you type in home birth, you'll see, you look it up, and you'll see that home childbirth is the, the mesh term that you need to use. You add it to your search manager, and your search will look like this. Now, I have just added analgesia on the bottom of this search strategy of home birth, just to show you um, what it will look like in its completeness. So we're using the text words, home birth, and mesh descriptor, home childbirth. We're oaring those two together. Then we're oaring the second group, which is the intervention, analgesia, and we're anding the two groups together. So you're getting home childbirth, home birth, and analgesia. And that gives you seven, of which five are trials, two are Cochrane Review. And you can export those citations either directly into Reference Management System or save them and import them into um, Cochrane. So just going back over what's already included in Central, Medline goes right back to 1966. Embase goes back to 1974. It has trial registers. It has career med from 2017 to March 2021. Unfortunately, it hasn't carried on, but all those previous records are there. And recently added a symbol in the trial registries, which are really useful. Other bibliographic databases that you might be interested in, depending on the, your, the scope of your review or your question. We have national and regional databases like CareerMed, uh, LILAX for Spanish and Portuguese um, speaking um, language references. Subject specific databases like AMED, which is for complementary medicines, PsychInfo for any psychiatry. Um, if you're interested in physiotherapy, Pedro is a very good high quality database to be looking at. You need to be looking at dissertation databases for unpublished studies, um, grey literature, open grey and NQIS. And it's also very important for you to be searching unpublished and ongoing studies and this reduces your selection bias, your publication bias, where you might only be finding um, trials with positive results, written in English, large sample sizes, those are the ones that tend to be um, published and indexed in the major databases. So you're looking beyond those to try and find negative or null results, small trials or foreign language trials. So when we're looking at the trial registered for ongoing trials, we look at clinicaltrials.gov and WHO. And now they're incorporated in Central. So in our review group, we give authors the choice of whether they use their central output with the acknowledgement that there is a one month time lag between those trials going into Central, or they um, search them individually themselves, and they, well, then they don't have the um, time lag. Uh, you can look at subjects, specific databases, you can go to the pharmaceutical industries, and it's always really good to be contacting colleagues and experts in the field for any additional trials um, that might be out there that you haven't found. It's also very important to identify high quality systematic reviews for your, for your topic or your title. Um, it's a good source of any additional studies that they might be in the reference list of systematic reviews. Um, it also um, is useful for your discussion of your own systematic review to show how yours relates to other systematic reviews. And useful sources of systematic reviews are the Cochrane Library, PubMed, Epistemonicus, as I said before, is now in the Cochrane Library, and Prospero, which is where systematic reviews are registered. And when you're looking into any other sources of studies that you're trying to find, always talk to your librarian or your information specialist because you might be doubling up on what you've already found. Conference abstracts um, that the librarian or this uh, information specialist says haven't been included in your search, you might need to look at those specifically. Reviews and guidelines, reference lists, 
as we mentioned, citations, related articles, um, specific study designs, so you might need adverse event reports or economic databases, um, possibly individual journals, but only what those that aren't um, indexed in the databases that you've already searched, otherwise you'll duplicate your efforts. And search engines and web searching, um, which actually we have found to be very useful. We've had a situation of a review a couple of years ago where a trial was missed, uh, was pointed out to us. We, we went through all our records and it wasn't picked up in our um, bibliographic database searching, but it was in Google because it was published very recently, but not yet indexed. So we always advise our authors just to do a very simple search of Google, just looking at the first page, just looking at the top few hits, just as a double check that um, there are new, no new trials of interest that are not yet indexed. Now I'm going to talk briefly about how you construct a search strategy, how you put it all together. Again, get help because they're complex and rigorous and this is just really the basic principle. So the structure of your search strategy is always based around your eligibility criteria. You start with the two or three most important concepts within that criteria and focus on those that are most likely to be in your title and abstract. So we are looking at of the PICO, we're looking at participants and intervention. We don't usually limit by outcome. It is possible to do that, but you need to be very careful if you're not over limiting and missing important things. An example where we do limit by outcomes is a very large review we have on HRT for menopause for women with hot flushes. So we know HRT for menopause is a huge search with huge output. Um, so we're pretty sure we can limit it safely by the outcome of hot flushes, but you'd only do that if you're very sure. So an example of um, a review title that we might construct a search for is helmets, helmets for preventing head and facial injuries in cyclists. So your participants or your problem or your population are the cyclists. Your intervention are the helmets. And your study design, which you add on at the end, is for RCTs. So we're only wanting RCTs of papers that are talking about helmets for cyclists. And as I said, Right at the beginning, we're aiming for finding as much as we can. So we're expressing every concept in as many ways as possible and to avoid the, the risk of missing the relevant study. Um, we acknowledge that this will lead to lower precision and you need to find a balance between the precision and the sensitivity. We're using both text words and control vocabulary, which are the mesh terms that we talked about. And preliminary searching uh, is is really important. So you're looking around the subject before you actually start. You're finding relevant papers. You're looking at the title and abstract words that they use. You're making sure that you use all those words in your strategy. Um, I often have a piece of paper next to me and write down all the words. And as I put them in the strategy, I tick them off so I know they're all being used. And it's important to know that a strategy written in MEDLINE will need to be translated for other databases like the MeSH terms that you use in MEDLINE are different, can be different to the M-tree terms for MBAS. The M-tree terms are the index terms in MBAS. So text words are those words that only appear in the title or the abstract of a record. So we're not able to search the full body of the paper. Um, I think machine learning can now do that, but the way we are constructing search strategies currently, it's just the title and the abstract. 
you need to try and find out as many synonyms for the word, any related terms, the international spellings, gynecology, gynecology, British and US, use alternative spellings, plurals, so brain injury, head injury, skull fracture. You're continually looking around for um, extra terms that will describe what you want. We use truncation and wild cards like protect or um, that truncation will bring up protects, protective, and protection. However, you need to be very aware of the dangers of truncation and wild cards. So, car with the truncation, you will bring up cars when you really want carcinoma. And recently, we had uh, a review that had thousands, uh, a search strategy that had thousands of out output in it. And it took us a while to figure out that somebody had truncated kids and we wanted children and it brought up children and kidney, a lot, a lot of kidney results. So we then uh, went back and changed that to just kid and kids. You can use proximity operators, which will give you a phrase. So you can have a certain amount of words between your keywords. So liver ABJ3, cancer, will give you cancer of the liver, liver cancer, bowel and liver cancer. That's very useful um, for um, making your search as wide as possible. And the syntax that you use, the truncations are different for each interface, like Sinal um, or Ovid. So we're just going to go back into the controlled vocabulary again because sometimes it can be a little bit difficult to understand. So as we said, Medline is MESH, Cochrane Library is MESH, Embase are called Entry, and these identify relative, uh, relevant articles even if different terms are used. So this is our belt and braces approach really to searching. So we use text words. If we make a mistake in our text words, we know that our mesh terms will pick up those papers. And we acknowledge that indexes aren't often clinical specialists. So the mesh terms that they've used might not be um, totally correct. So our papers will be picked up by our good text words. And that's, um, the, that's where our, our search is rigorous and using belt and braces really. So we check terms and relevant papers, we use database tools to map words, and the control, as we said before, must be translated for each database. So and for our home birth, the mesh term here is home childbirth on the tree. This is a really handy tool that um, you can use to find mesh words. It's called the Yale Mesh Analyzer, and it will take up to 20 PubMed IDs at a time. Uh, you put a, only of relevant PubMed IDs to your topic, and um, it will bring up a grid where you can check your mesh check. So I've only put two in here, but as I said, you can have up to 20, and more than two is good because it will show you um, more, more terms. So we can see here that both these papers use this mesh term. So we would definitely use it. It also uses the following mesh terms. So we would know that we need to put those mesh terms in our search. It also shows you the different ones between the two papers. So you can pick and choose which of those explains your topic better. And study design filters. Now these are just a small search strategies that we tag on to the end of our participants and our intervention search strategy, which will limit our search to only RCTs. Not necessarily only RCTs, you can also have observation, observational filters, systematic review filters, although they tend to be less validated than the RCT filter. But if you need to use them, you need to use them. Um, so, uh, lots of research has been done to identify the most sensitive and efficient search terms for these filters. And they are different according to the database and the interface. 
And of course, you don't need to use one um, in central because they should only contain RCTs. This is an example of the Cochrane highly sensitive search strategy in PubMed. So, oops, sorry. So you can see that uh, lines one to eight are awed together. And then they've done a knot trying to get the animals out, which doesn't often work. Um, so it's nine, which is the awed group, not 10. And this, you can find these strategies in uh, the technical supplement in chapter four of the handbook, Cochrane handbook. So um, if you're doing a search in Ovid and you don't want to use one of the RCT search strategy filters, which you can save in Ovid and run again if you like, but if you don't want to do that, you can also use additional limits, which will bring up the randomized controlled trial. And this is a safe way to do it because in the background of Ovid, it's now using the Cochrane um, sensitive randomized control trial search strategy. So you can absolutely use that in Ovid. And this is in how you can limit in PubMed. And I know you can also uh, limit by RCT and, and confidence. So now we're going to set up, I'm going to talk about Boolean operators, of which you probably know very well. So OR is a Boolean operator that is used to expand a search. So the picture on the left is papers, any papers that might talk anything about bicycles and helmets or just helmets or just bicycles, bicycles and helmets. Whereas AND on the right, the Boolean operator is used to only pick up papers that talk both bicycle helmet. That's how we limit. So our population is all together, bicycling, cycling, cyclists, and the mesh term bicycling. The intervention is the helmet or head protective devices, mesh term head protective devices. We and those two groups together and the study design, which is the RCG filter. And we bring it all together like this, so that in the middle we get this nice little nub, which is only talking about those studies that are cyclists, helmets, and RCTs. And this is an example of central search strategy of cycling and helmets. And you add those two groups together as line nine to give your output. This is an example of PubMed strategy. So the cycling is uh, awed in line one in line five. Intervention helmets awed in line eight. And the study designs the RCT filter. So we're anding those three groups together in line 20. And here we have an example, which they say is a small to moderate complexity search strategy. It's actually more moderate, I think, than, than low. It's for uh, public health, and it's looking at housing improvements for health and socioeconomic outcomes. So you can see the population on the left-hand side, and it's awed in line 31, the intervention, And the middle part there, 38 to 40, is trying to remove um, anything to do with homeless, or homeless persons, or any animal studies that might be getting in there because you're using a lot of terms about homes, houses, housing. And the uh, search study design that they've tagged on the end of there is a um, for longitudinal studies or epidemiological studies. So when you're talking about limits and restrictions, um, 
you need to be very careful and avoid any bias. So we, we don't limit by any language. We would always arrange a translation for foreign language papers. We don't limit by any year unless there's a clear point of change. Um, in our group, uh, we could limit anything on IVF to 1979, 1980, but there's actually no real point because those terms are not going to be mentioned in any papers before that time anyway. So we don't usually limit by year. And we don't limit by format because you might be uh, reading an editorial or a comment that mentions an LCT that might be important for you to find. And you can see information on this in Chapter 7 of the Cochrane Handbook. So now we're just going to talk um, about how you manage and report your search. So make sure you store results from each source. So download all available fields for each record. Always use a systematic review management system or a bibliographic reference management system. Um, they're incredibly important for um, not only managing your references, but for deduping, because you are searching in multiple databases with similar terms, you're going to find um, a lot of duplicates. And to eyeball these duplicates yourself is, is, a, is quite, a, quite a job. So if you can dedupe on in, entry or import in Providence or in note, then it makes this job so much easier. I think there's always going to be a few remaining duplicates, perhaps not so much with Providence. Um, but definitely with EndNote, which you do need to eyeball, but it's, it's so much easier than, um, than looking at them all. Also, you need to probably get help with configuration files with your librarian or Cochrane Information Studies and import filters. But you can also Google this and um, they'll, it, Google will let you know which ones to use. And it's very important for you to document your search because you might be rerunning it um, and you've forgotten. So um, document everything. And it's not only for your own sake, but it is for reporting transparently and accountably so that anybody in the future coming to run your search who might be updating your system over here or somebody who wants to um, check your search, they can reproduce it and update it in the future. So you need to document what data database interface, the, what you searched, when you searched it, the dates of your search, and any date limits that you might have used, and how you searched. So to, to prove this, we usually copy and paste the exact strategies with any limit set numbers, number of results into the appendices of the review for each database search and each resource that we've um, covered. Be sure you keep copies of everything so you can save that locally or on paper. Um, don't rely on internet book bookmarks um, and save your exported text files and your reference management databases. When you're reporting the search for your review in a protocol, you report the search in the methods. We describe your sources and limits. Um, and you can also add at least one search strategy to the appendices. It's usually central, although in our group we always add all of them to a protocol. And these search strategies, you remove the hits per line because this is only a protocol and it's talking about what you intend to search, not what you searched at the time. And for a review, you always document um, your search in the dates section of the review. In the abstract, we're talking about the sources, dates, and limits. And the methods of the review is a more detailed description of sources, dates, and limits, including interfaces that you've used. Your um, search is uh, accounted in the results, so the number of results that you found, and in the figures, the replacement flow chart. And as I said, for a protocol, we have um, the copy and paste of all the search strategies that you've used in the review and in the appendices, 
and these are line by line and they have the hits because they are what we've done for the review. This is just an example of a Prisma flow diagram just showing how references flow through your process of your review. So we start off with records that you've identified through database searching, the total number, any additional records through other sources. So these might be um, trials that you found through reference lists, systematic reviews, or from asking experts in the field. The next box down is important because it reminds me to remind you to keep a very clear note of how many duplicates have been removed on import into your reference management systems. So um, we know that Covidence keeps a good record of those, but if you're using anything else at EndNote, if the numbers will come up in a box when you import, then you record them, then they disappear. So you, you won't find that number again. So always keep note. Um, of course, you don't need to use incompetence. Then it will go through to the number that you've screened, the number that you've used in the qualitative sense of this in your text, and the number that you've actually included in your quantitative sense of this, your meta-analysis. So we all know that writing a, a review can take some time, a long time, often. So sometimes you need to update your search before completing the review. And we always um, rerun the search if it's more than 12 months old. Um, sometimes we might do it at six months if we know there are a lot of studies coming out. So um, to do this, you need a well-documented search. You need to have stored uh, all your documentation on the search. And if you're using the databases like Ovid, CINAHL, um, EBSCO, sorry, you can save your searches. You just need to join up to them, you can save them, and then when it comes to rerunning them, you can just click the box, rerun, and then date limit it so that you're not getting the um, references from your earlier search. Uh, that is, makes life so much easier than uh, recreating. But if you've kept documents of your search um, as a text word, a text document, you can just copy and paste those terms into back into the databases. But as I say, much easier if you've saved it within the databases. When you do rerun it, just check the databases for for changes. Sometimes uh, every year. They might update, update some mesh terms or entry terms so these can change. And if they change, you'll miss them. So just double check that um, those terms are still being used. So the real take home message from um, my talk is for you to get help. Um, always uh, approach your local subject librarian or corporate information specialists right from the beginning. Plan a systematic search and as I said before, it's always a balance of sensitivity and efficiency and I always think that, um, designing search strategy is a bit of an art and a science. So you're always looking at what's practical but what is going to find the studies that you need. Again, start with central uh, your CRG specialised register if it's a public review. And then you would go to Medline, Embase. Embase is a very useful resource because it holds all the conference abstracts, which Medline doesn't. Also additional trials to Medline. Uh, and then consider any other appropriate sources like your special, uh, special databases, your subject specific databases like um, AMED, PsychInfo, Pedro, Physio. Always think about your key concepts of your question and how they might be described in as many ways as possible. And again, that research strategy needs to be changed when you're moving from Medline to Inverse or Medline to Sino because they have different syntax and different index terms. 
and really importantly, set up a system to manage your results and keep careful records. I mean, you've set up your confidence, um, which will manage your results. Okay, thanks very much. Does anybody any questions? Thank you, Marianne. That's an amazing presentation. Absolutely fantastic. Um, we've got one question come in so far, um, and that's from someone who's asking, is there a reason that the Cochrane search filter for RCTs doesn't include the British spelling of randomised oh, in the yeah. title of text search? Yes, no, that's a good question. Um, in actual fact, in my own search strategy, I have added I've added it. I've actually put a question mark where the Z is so that it covered that it picks up S's and Z's. But I, because I had questioned this, the strategy has been very highly validated and it does pick up the um, the randomized term. I, I um, yeah, I would add it. I would add one with an S. I agree totally. Anyone else have any questions that they want to send in to us? If not, if anyone does have a, a question that comes up, then feel free to um, send it in to support at covidence.org and um, we can pass it on to, to Marion to answer for it. Oh, there's one more question. Um, Okay, would this search apply to qualitative studies? So I guess that the question that's being asked is, would you structure the search for qualitative studies the same as you would for RCTs? Um, yes, yes, you would. You just wouldn't have an RCT filter on the bottom of it. So, um, <clears throat> You might find a qualitative search strategy string, um, but it's often advisable not to use one. Um, uh, it just means that your output would be quite large. Um, but I suppose that's what you've got to expect with this, because often those other search strategies for limiting to study designs aren't validated um, properly. So uh, yes, you would still be using your participants in your intervention. Um, I don't know if you've got a particular example for me, but um, yes, I would say yes for that. Great. Um, so someone's asked, uh, is there any tool that you would recommend? Not quite clear um, if that's a, a search tool or a reference management tool. Um, well, if you've got, uh, if it's a reference management tool, of course, Covidence is very useful. Um, in note, I use, uh, I just import my references into EndNote first before importing into Confidence, but you don't need to. Um, yeah, they come back with something a bit more specific, Marion. So it's um, in terms of a tool you would recommend, it's an AI integrated search tool. Oh, okay. Is there one you'd uh, recommend? I don't, I don't know of it, actually. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. That's all right. Um, um, Got another question. What are your thoughts on databases like Web of Science? Yes, great. Yeah, they're good for searching beyond um, medical terms. Um, Scopus is great. Eric is good for educational. So yes, I definitely um, use what you what what's available to you really. All of those are very good databases. Web of yeah. Science might be. Um, it just gives you quite a, a large output, um, but it will give you everything appropriate to what you want. I guess it's just about being able to maximize your searches, isn't it? To cover everything that you possibly can, not miss anything. 
Yes, yes. So we've got another uh, question. So this is about the Prisma flow chart. Um, someone's just asking about um, if it's updated and were you showing the old version? Oh, it could have been <laughs> quite easily. Sorry. Um, I think it has recently been updated actually. Um, yes, I apologize for that if that is the old version. I have to change that slide in the future. Uh, that's okay basic um, description of how you would um, show your studies flowing through um, from the databases through to the actual measure analysis. Exactly. And um, anyone who needs to get a template from Prisma can go to the Prisma um, website and that has templates for new studies and for updated um, reviews as well. Um, so you have a question about what are your thoughts on not limiting to RCTs for systematic reviews? Um, I think absolutely some some questions require going beyond RCTs. If there if there aren't RCTs in um, your particular topic, um, then perhaps yes, we need to accept that we need to go to the next step down in quality of trials. And um, many Cochrane review groups are now introducing systematic reviews that are not just RCTs. If you're looking for beyond RCTs, though, you, you must realise you can't use the RCT filter. Right. And um, someone else is asking, do you think it's a if an institution um, doesn't subscribe to Embase, do you think that's a problem? What are the solutions? Um, yes, there are. Um, you can access Embase through embase.com. Um, but uh, personally, yeah, I think it's it's a shame not to be searching Embase because you're missing perhaps um, your conference abstracts. However. Um, Systematic reviews are sort of moving away from conference abstracts a little because of the quality. Um, and they're not peer reviewed, they might not have results. Um, so, yes, I suppose I'm saying I, I would prefer to have it. But if you haven't got it, then um, use Web of Science, Scopus, one of those, as well as Medline. Fantastic. Um, and someone else is asking about, um, do you think that there's a recommended minimum number of databases to search for a systematic review? Um, we would um, say uh, probably our minimum would be a central um, Medline and Embase. Um, but of course, if you have a particular topic that has a a subject specific database you need to be looking at, at that as well um, but yes that to me that would be a minimum i wouldn't just search central even though it it has got midline and inverse in it simply because of the different um, syntax terms you're using in different um, interfaces like ovid so you'll be using um, um, different um, fields and text words in between the two. So it, it, it's just a safety net, I think, um, between the two. Eventually, perhaps we will uh, just be able to search central, but I think currently, no, I would say at least central, midline and embase. Or Scopus for people who haven't got embase. Wonderful. Okay, um, I think that's that's just about it. Um, thank you, Marion. That was a wonderful presentation. I really appreciate your time. Well, the, webinar, oh, <laughs> the webinar the um, webinar recording will be converted and then it will be sent out to everyone who's um, registered for the webinar. So you should receive a copy of the recording within the next 24 hours. If you don't, then um, just contact us at support and we can forward that on to you. So thank you very much for all your attendance and um, 
let's hope that you can get on with your search strategy now and um, produce some great systematic reviews. Thank you. Thanks, Marion. Thanks, Julie.